Good morning, everyone. We'll go ahead and begin the service. begin the service this morning. Are there any needs to take up first? Sister. Sorry, Sister Vanessa. Yeah, uh, remember Aurora, Carla's daughter? She's got real high blood pressure, and they're going to take the, try to take the baby on Tuesday. Okay. All right. So, so see, can I have you come up and lead us in prayer this morning? Good to be back and thank y'all for all the cards and condolences for my uncle passing away and I was on the way down there and had an aunt from my mother's side passed away locally and but I was able to get back in time for that and the other funerals my heart just goes out to the loved ones that they're worried and concerned and things happen and but uh, our prayers was with you all and sorry I couldn't make everything there but uh, Lord is good, took care of us on the trip, had some bad weather coming down, but the Lord took care of that too. So we made everything through and just good to be back in the house of the Lord. And uh, thank you for your prayers and your thoughts for our, our family. Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, we thank you and praise thee, O Lord. Father, you are so good to us, Lord. You give us sunshine on the outside, sunshine on the inside, my God. And Father, we are here together this day, Lord. Lord, to sing of your praises, Lord, to feel of thy goodness, O oh God. Heavenly Father, you see the request before us, all the needs of the body. Lord, may you be with each and every one and help them, we pray, O oh God. Father, be with us through this service, Lord. Be with Brother David as he bring forth the singing, Lord. The singers, Lord, the musicians, may it all play a part in thy perfect will, O oh God. We just thank you and praise thee, Lord, that we enjoy the freedom that we can still meet together, Lord. Oh, Father, may we not take that for granted, oh God. And may we always say it is good to come into the house of the Lord, oh God. Now, Heavenly Father, have thy perfect way in this service. Lord, we pray with Israel, Lord, may you be with her, help her. Be it for military, Lord, the decisions be made in her government, oh God. We pray for peace in Israel. We pray for peace in Jerusalem, my Lord. Have thy perfect way there. We pray for our own nation, the United States, Lord. May you be of its government, Lord. May somehow you inspire it to make a few good decisions, Lord, for it seems like it's such an evil, evil age that we live in, Lord. But Father, we know that all things work to the good of them that love thee, O God. Father, thy perfect will be done. We love you and we praise thee, my Lord. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we ask. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll, I'll fly away. Oh, oh to our home on God's celestial shore, I, I'll fly away. Oh, oh I, I'll fly away, oh glory, I, I'll fly away. Well, now if 
for um, God is my refuge this morning. Right. I'm so grateful. Thank you for your thoughtfulness, your kindness, and your gener generous heart. Dear brothers and sisters, we want to thank everyone who helped us in any way, in moving or whatsoever anyone done. It was a surprise to us. Thank you for your labor and loving gifts from your hearts. We also know that prayer to our Father through our Lord Jesus Christ brought many blessings on our behalf too, and showed how much the body of Christ is shining with the love of God. All of these who couldn't give prayed for us, and we could tell at every moment God has made a way for us to start over at every step of the way, above and beyond what we could think or ask. We love you all so much, for he is a faithful that promised. We also want to know, want you to know this goes both ways. If you all ever have a need, we will be there too. Brother Robert Goins, Sister Vicki Goins, so... All right, I'll have the end. Oh, were you going to say something? Brother Robert, were you going to say something? On behalf of my wife and myself, I do want to thank everybody for what I have done. It was a fire for us. And, uh, but we don't want to look at you. We still want to help us move in that way.
Christ. We stand together hand in hand as soldiers we unite and stand for you. We kneel in prayer, knowing that you're always there for us. Because we're the bride of Christ, we're called to be perfected in the end of times, even. Soon we'll stand in perfect unity. No one believe for hindrance in our way. The chaff is being blown away now. The journey home is almost over. We've knelt in prayer, knowing that you'd still be there for us. Because we're the bride of Christ. We're called to be perfected in the end of time, even when.
Sisters, all right, y'all can be seated. Sister Betty, I'll have you come on down. Sister Carmen, would you? Sister Hannah, after that. of doubt hovers o'er me, storms of life toss me to and fro. There is a place I can go.
Major and Carmen, I'll have you all. And Brother Kenny, would you all have one after that then? I still am at a loss for words of what to say to this church family. Um, but I do want to say thank you for the prayers. They were felt. Um, when I found out from about my dad, it was actually March 5th and I was working, had just started work and my sister called me and told me that my dad had been put in ICU and I started making arrangements and just with my work, I had a lot that I needed to get done before I could you know, just abruptly leave. And the way the Lord worked it out, um, it ended up being later in the day. And I wanted Ricky to go with me, but I really didn't know what to expect or put him in that position with his work responsibilities. But the Lord put it on his heart, and it just came together like a beautiful picture. And it was, it was God, because I don't know what I would have done without Ricky being there to help me put my dad's affairs in order. And so it was very fast, and this was not something that I knew was coming and um, Ricky and my dad and myself was able to sit down or sit by his bedside and him tell us what his wishes were and what he needed and God just put it all together and I think the thing that stands out to me is the love of our father um, he cares for us so much that he will give you indications of things to help you prepare and some years back I'd had a dream I was preparing for my dad's funeral and in the dream, I told the funeral home man, uh, man I, I was at the desk, and I said, I want Faith Assembly Ministry to preach at my dad's funeral. My dad had told me that if there ever was a ministry on the face of this earth, it was Faith Assembly. And, you know, that's up to God where that is. And um, But I praise God that they came. I, I didn't want to ask, so I just left it as if any of you feel led. And it was a quite surprise that Brother Allen came. I would have never asked him to do that, that distance. And um, But it, it was God, and I know that some people heard some things that they had never heard. And there was such an anointing in the service. And I praise God for the love, because I did not know you could love me any more than you did. And you absolutely prove that through your prayers, your texts, whatever it may be, even if I don't know about it. There was a presence on me and Ricky that kept us. God provided a home for us to stay at that was next to the hospital we didn't even know was there. And we were able to, um, through the caseworker for my dad, they there said, don't make any reservations for a hotel because um, my mom lived a ways out. But... God worked that out, and he just did everything so perfectly. And I know that um, the, they did not know what was coming for them. And when Brother Kevin told me 18, my, I just was like, what? 18? Wow. And, and um, I, I kind of said, I think the, I don't know if I'm saying the right word, the Calvary, like an army came. And it, it was like, well, Lord, feed them. And there were some young men behind me that was my cousin's sons. And they told me they were really feeling the Holy Ghost. You could feel it. They were breathing heavy behind Ricky and I, and they were just touched. And one is a stepson, and his dad had just committed suicide a year before, and he was there, and he said, I've never felt anything like this, and my heart has been touched. So I praise God for it, and thank you, and I, I just don't know what else to say other than I could see and feel God the entire way and even till we got home and it was so good to be home and get back so pray for me i still have some things that i've got to wrap up and i need the lord's wisdom in it because i'm not really sure what to do so continue to pray for us f <clears throat> song the cross he carried up to Calvary's hill I 
never saw the precious blood that my Savior spilled. I never heard the mob that cried, oh, let him be crucified. Yeah. 
Thank you, sisters. All right, y'all can be seated. Brother Kenny, I'll have y'all come on. I just want to say the service has been so beautiful this morning already. I just want to say we're so thankful to be called up here to sing. And I just want to give God all the glory. He deserves it.
Thank the Lord for his spirit here all of this morning and appreciate all the songs. And we just want to make way for the word now. Well, praise the Lord this morning. Praise God is so good. And we praise him for it. I know that there's a lot of people going through a lot of things, so I wanted Sister Hockenberry to sing that song this morning because of the things that people are going through. I'm a little hoarse, I know that. I, I guess I've been moving around a little bit <laughs> last few days, so. But I thank the Lord, I feel good, so thank him for that. Good to see Brother Darrell, Sister Debbie here with us again today. May the Lord bless them, and let us pray at this time. Heavenly Father, we're grateful to you. Grateful to you for the blessings you've blessed us with, for the songs that we've been able to sing, to sing and to hear sing here this morning. We pray your blessings now upon each one, Lord, that puts forth the effort to do what is your will for their lives. And I pray, Lord, for the singers. I pray for the musicians. I pray for the brothers that minister this morning and for all the saints of God here and wherever they may be. Lord, and forgive us, I pray. Forgive us of our shortcomings, anything that would be in our lives. We pray that, Lord, you would take care of that. Bless us here this morning, minister to each need, we pray in Jesus Christ's name, amen. You may be seated. Well, I stand here today next to two great flags. We see a country that is losing her way. We see Israel that is, it may look bad, but it's, it's working. Uh, you may get a, they may get rid of one man, but there'll be another one that's going to have to stand up. I... I thank the Lord that next, next week is what they call Easter. 
Really, Easter is a Catholic word. Should be Resurrection Day. That's what it is. Uh, we've been we've done been taught these things, and we know, but we go ahead and go along with it because you know it's handy. But this will be next next Sunday, and I'd like to hear Sister Carmen and Sister Hannah sing that sing song again next Sunday if they would because of that, because it points out what has really happened and what will what will take care of our cures, everything. Because <clears throat> our, our righteousness was, <clears throat> I better get rid of this frog. <clears throat> give, him, give him something to swim in. <clears throat> But I just, uh, I just thinking about that and thinking about all you wonderful people. How that God has blessed you and how he's been with you in your times of need. Because I know that there's different ones that have gone through things, sicknesses and different things and then other things, family matters and whatever. <clears throat> but God is gracious in it all. And I, I think of that, I just, song that Sister Hockenberry sang, I just thinking about it, and even in the bed the other morning, as I thought upon that song, and God is my refuge. Needs your refuge this morning. Yes. From the very beginning of the songs that were sang, from the young sisters all the way to the end, I appreciate every one of them. And there was, there was spirit in them, the spirit of God. Because if you ever read the Psalms, if you ever read parts of the Bible, you will find out that the beginning of the service, the steps that go to the temple there were, were reading steps, and they, they sang separate several several different psalms as they walked up those steps because they were steps of of learning is what they were we've been there we've been on those steps they're still there today and i i thank the lord that uh, sometimes we get in a hurry but they didn't get in a hurry whenever they walked up those steps because it, w it had meaning to it. Because they were going to worship Almighty God. And that's what we're here for today. We're not here just to see one another and not here to just hear music and not here to just hear words, but everything works together yeah. in a service for the benefit of God's children. And I thank God for that this morning. I just thought it, everything was so beautiful this morning in the service. It, as each one put their hearts into it as they sing. So, appreciate the Lord this morning. Appreciate you. Maybe, maybe I'll start out like Brother Jason does with a little joke here. There was a deacon sitting back about where he's at there. And the preacher preached, and there's a man sitting beside him. And he went to sleep. And the preacher saw it, and it bothered him all at once. He just said to Brother Deacon, Brother Jason, <laughs> wake up that brother. He said, preacher, you wake him up. You're the one who put him to sleep. <laughs> I thought maybe you'd get a kick out of that. <laughs> we're here to, not to entertain, but we're here to uh, worship the Lord and whatever that he does, it's all for his glory and honor. God is good. God is great and greatly to be yes, praised. Amen. We thank him for his mercy toward us. 
You're, you are my brothers and sisters, and I thank the Lord for you. I like to get around and shake hands with you. Every time I don't have all the, all the time to do that. But then whenever I do, I realize that in shaking different ones' hands that they're different ones going through trials and tests even now. They're not up here to cry and to, to bemoan their problems that they have. I don't know if that's a word or not, but it's, it's now. Maybe they can put it in the... Put, them, put it in their writings. Bemoan. So, as I said, I'm not here to... Uh, well, you're not here for that purpose. But you're here many looking through sorrows and tests that nobody knows about. But whenever people are suffering, many times they just take it between them and the Lord. And that's mostly all who knows about it. But I'm not here to <clears throat> look up on a bunch of grieving people, but I'm here to try to help those that are grieving. The loss of loved ones. I was glad to be able to go down to Georgia. Sister Carmen and her family there. And also up to East Chicago area. I was glad to go there. Sister Carla and her family. It's good to, good to be with them. They treat us both places like we were some great something. But we we're just we we're just people. I thank Brother Kevin and Sister Sandy. Thank him for driving down there and to Georgia and back to East Chicago area. Appreciate my brother. Thank him for that. And I thank each one of you that have gone to the different places. I know that it's helped in different ways. And maybe, maybe next Sunday I'll have a little bit of an Easter service, as they call it. Resurrection service. And that's the reason why I asked them to sing that song. Because there's a lot that really goes in, really went into that last supper. Think about it. If you knew this was your last day, would you feel like Jesus did? The things that he taught in those last hours of time was something that had never been heard. You take from the 11th chapter, then when Jesus, he rides in a donkey, on a donkey into Jerusalem with a week's time to go. Yet in Matthew 24, he was able to give instructions unto a people that would last all the way unto the end. He told them what would happen to Jerusalem. He told them what would happen whenever he was crucified. They didn't understand it. If they had, then they would have probably done something about it because Peter, he had said not so. But Jesus told him, you, you savor the things of man, not the things of God. Jesus bore his sorrows alone. 
a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. Because he had nobody to talk to but the Father, because the disciples, it wasn't time for them to understand. Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to understand the hour that we're living in. I'm sitting here. I don't, I don't put no, I don't put nothing into it, no more than words that I say. I was thinking a year from now it won't be the same. Because there's many things that's going to happen in this country. And if we go to sleep, it'll come up on us unaware. God's taking out certain people because they could not stand the time that is coming. Because God, God even in death, is merciful. He's merciful to the ones that go on. But he leaves certain things for us to do and to keep our heads lifted up high. Not let the things that happen to us put our head to the ground. But Jesus said, seeing those times coming, lift up your head. Look up. Your redemption is drawing nigh. He was talking to some people back then, but his meaning was for us. Yes. Amen. We're living in the last days of prophecy. Right. This, this day was what was prophesied, and this day was what George Washington's vision was speaking about. It's right around the corner. It's on the doorsteps of America today. We have a government. I know you're supposed to pray, pray for your government, but it's kind of hard sometimes. Brother Branham said, I just commit them to the Lord anymore. But I do pray for Israel. And I pray for the saints of God, and I know that there'll be people here, foolish virgins. They will have to go through something before the end will be upon them. The white robes will be furnished to them through the things that they suffer, just like it was to the Jews in the fifth seal. They didn't recognize Christ when he was here. But for what they stood for, because of what that their, the purpose of the Jewish nation was. I've been reading in Jeremiah. For the first 19 chapters of Jeremiah, he is left alone to say whatever he whatever God showed him. But when you go into the 20th chapter from there on, it's, a, it's something that no man would ever want to go through. Put in stocks and prisons, Lord, into wells that only had mud in them. As you go into the 20th chapter, he said, I won't speak anymore in the name of the Lord. But then the answer comes. He said, the word of God is fire in my bones. Then he knew he had to speak. Man is made with feelings, even prophets. 
Jesus had feelings. But he had somebody to talk to, to listen to. So do you. If we're the bride of Christ, we have the rights of Christ. I like that song that they sang, You're Not Alone. We're not alone. I thank God for that. I will get into my message now. I hope that you understand what I've said. I've got three scriptures here. I've got several that I haven't got to, but I've got three scriptures here that I want to look at this morning. I may look at different ones, and I've got a couple pictures that I will be showing. I want to talk a little bit about the, in, from the fourth chapter. This is concerning the beast, but we're going to look to see what the beast really are. The beast was responsible. They had responsibilities. And each one of the beast was ignited by the Spirit of God from the very beginning until, until the end. We'll look at that. He said, After this, <clears throat> I looked and behold, a door was open in heaven. It had something to do with something that God is going to do. A door was open in heaven, otherwise, he's going into a vision. His spirit is taken, but his body is still on earth. He's not taken up himself, but his spirit is. Which represents, what he's representing here is the bride of Christ. Going, in, going into heaven. Listen, listen what he learned. And the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet. The first voice that he heard was as a trumpet. Otherwise, it was like, like these horns or these shofars that you blow. Talking with me, which said, come up hither. Otherwise, now he's going, he, his spirit is going into heaven. His body is still on Patmos. Just like Paul talking about being caught up to the third heaven. Come up hither and I will show thee things which must be here after. So he, he's not looking, he's not looking at the hour that he's living in. He's looking at what is to happen. which brings him all the way to the day in which that we are living. He said, and immediately, immediately I was in the Spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, which is God. He does not explain that God was a man. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. He's looking at something magnificent. He's looking at something glorious. Because that is what is, that's what God's being is. And there was a rainbow 
round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. It don't have all the colors that we see in the rainbow, but this rainbow represented God. The rainbow has seven colors in it. The rainbow that they have made for the gays and lesbians have six colors. Number of a man, evil man. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. These are the elders, twenty-four elders, which would be the twelve tribes representing the twelve tribes of Israel, these men re representing the twelve tribes of Israel and the twelve apostles. And up on the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their head crowns of gold, showing what that how they are arrayed in that in that setting which will be. He's looking at the future here, which will be. Because here they are glorified. And here they are no doubt resurrected now. But this is, not the, this is not the main thing of this sitting. But it shows them there that something has been settled within them. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of God, seven attributes of God. Really, God is recognized in seven names. I won't go into them. But he is represented in that because each one of these names covers everything of what that he is. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass likened to crystal. Somebody wanted me to uh, come to me one time a few years ago wanting to bring this part in with the 15th chapter, which is talking about the foolish, foolish virgins and the Jews there. I said it's not the same. It's not the same picture because you see that the, this, they were standing on a sea of fire. But these are standing on a sea of crystal, of, of glass, like unto crystal. Hey. This is the saints of God. Hey. This is the bride of Christ. We're going to be different. The change has to come for us to be different. The change in our body. We are now learning because Jesus said, come and learn of me. I am meek and lowly. In heart, you shall find rest unto your soul. That's what we're doing. We're learning of him. We're reading his word. We're explaining the things of God to the betterment of the saints of God. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind the, these eyes are shaped before, before and behind. The, these are the eyes that he sees, which is on their foreheads and on the back of their heads. A 
I'll go over that verse again. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne, round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. He, he is given something to see which will not be understood until our day of which has been brought out. The beast there which goes into the sixth chapter of which is a revelation of each, of each age, of each time period. Not each church age, but the church ages are figured in that. If you know what I mean, the church ages overlap in order to make up the beast. And the first beast was like a lion. That, that would cover your first church age, the time of the apostles. Because in that, they had a grip on, on the word of God that they would not let go. You can see that in the first, in the first seal. And this is the first church age of which it we're looking at. First beast like unto a lion, and the second beast like unto a cave. That is the second period of time which covers the second church age. Because we find people being killed, and it, it lasts. This one here lasts until 312. Then in 325, they had that Nicene Council. And the Nicene Council brought an end to persecution as it was. Because the king at that time, he recognized it because that he saw a cross in 312. And it said, by this ye shall conquer, and ye shall prevail. So he had each one of his soldiers on his, on his shield to make a cross. But really, that vision really wasn't from heaven. Because it didn't do anything only stopped the fight, but it put in God as another God. I'm going into just a little bit of this on each one of them. And this lasted, this lasted all the way up to 500, year 500. And then in 500, you have your, your third one. Or, uh, or at the end of 500. Huh? Second beast likened to a calf, and the third beast had the face of a man. You go from 500 to 1500, which is Satan's Millennium. That is what it is called, Satan's Millennium, because as Brother Jackson said, they went into that, that time period riding horses and, and having buggies that they rode in and so on like that until 1500, because in 1515 in that area, then you have a different setting, a different setup. And then you have that 
that third seal. The third seal is the starting of the revival. Really, a hundred years before that, a hundred years before Martin Luther, his uncle was ready to be executed. And he told him, he said, today you kill a stork. But he said, it won't be long until there will be a swan, which was Martin Luther's message. Message of repentance toward God. Martin Luther, according to what I read in history, was crawling up the steps to kiss the feet of Mary, which, which was a statue, and, and he said it was so, it'd been kissed so many times that the toes were missing. Just the stub because, but Martin Luther on his way up, on, on his way up, whenever he was going up, the voice of God come to him. Yes, said, Martin Luther, Martin Luther, the just shall live by faith. Because of that, he got a revelation, and he was converted. Of course, the Catholic Church was against marriage. This was a lot of their problem all the way that, through that 10, that thousand year period of time. And of course, Martin Luther wasn't married. But then after this happened, then he, he began to preach that it was, it was good to have a wife, for a minister to have a wife, and so on. And they, they said, Martin Luther, you're preaching this, but you don't, you don't have a wife. So he married a nun, had five children, to prove them wrong. So that's just a little history that, that I had read into years ago. The face of a man which went on into John Wesley's time. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle, which is our period of time. This really, in 1963, which was 61 years ago this week. Starting today, which would end up next Sunday, the seals were preached. God permitted me to be there. I was pastor in a Methodist church. And then that's when I heard God speak to me out of the word, the 18th chapter of Revelation, come out of her, my people. I was a Methodist, but her, she had daughters. The great whore of Revelation 17 had daughters. which were the same thing. You know, God bless the people under, under John Wesley. This was the greatest revival that had ever been had since the first age up till that time. 
the Philadelphia church age when people would just contact people and, and they would fall to their knees and be saved. This one man got, a, got underneath the bridge and he began to pray. And these people walked over the bridge. People fell under conviction and they couldn't go any farther. They had to give their lives to the Lord. Because why, did, why would that happen? Because before that period of time, the sixth church age, God's made it an open door. And that was the reason for it. An open door. God opened the door to repentance. I know that people were still baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, but they didn't know any better. It wasn't until 1908 in that area of when baptism in the name of Jesus Christ was introduced. I had heard Brother Jackson tell the story about a, about a preacher that had a revival up here in northern Indiana. And they had several people that repented during that time and accepted the Lord and they got ready to baptize the people in the and the evangelist started baptizing. Before he baptized the first person, the God spoke out loud, said, will you be baptized in my name? Or Jesus said that. Will you be baptized in my name? And the pastor said, what did he say? I'll tell you later. He got ready to baptize. There's about three people there that God spoke the same thing. Jesus said, will you be baptized in my name? He said, he went ahead and baptized all of them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Got through, the preacher asked him, said, what did God tell you? I want to know what he told you. He said it was Jesus spoke to me and said, would you be baptized in my name? So they went home. They opened their Bible and began to read. People won't open their Bible. They listened to some far off teaching of yesteryear. What worked in Luther and what worked in, in John Wesley God had to make a change to this. They had revivals, healing. More than a more than a hundred people were healed under John Wesley's ministry. Yet he himself had had TB and he never was healed, but he went preaching anyway. His wife was against it. But he preached anyway. He didn't have much of a home life, so he was on a horse 4,400 miles a year. That's, that's a long ways to ride a horse. He went throughout the cold country here in America. He was preaching in this one, one place and all these coal miners. And here was a rough man. Big old burly rough man. And this other man jumped up and was going to hurt John Wesley. This big old burly man said, you don't do nothing to this man. See, God has always got something there to take care of of every situation. He may use a sinner to do that. You say, why would he do that? He used Nebuchadnezzar to
to convict Israel of their wrongdoings. You come on down to the eagle. What an eagle does is scream. There's no other scream like it. Some have said, well, e eagles can't do that. You know they can, don't you? Like the story of the little chicken. Little chicken house. In some way, this eagle egg got under one of the chickens and hatched. That's like a Methodist. Or a Baptist. Or even a Catholic. Which were eagle eggs. God can use a chicken. <laughs> he used this old hen to hatch out this egg. It's bigger than any of the rest of them. Every once in a while, it would see these chickens flop their wings, but they didn't go anywhere. But he forgot that his wings would really work. Till one day, he heard his mother scream Amen. with a message. Come out of her, my people. Come out of that old chicken house. You know you're not comfortable there, so he learned what his wings were for. They were to fly. God has given us something. We're a blessed people. He's given us a message that's going to stick. Amen. It's going to take you higher. Lord. It is taking us higher yes. than we've ever been. Hallelujah. Because God sent a prophet that screamed out a message. Come out of her, my people. That was when I had to make my decision 61 years ago. I was already in the truth, but I hadn't left the eggshell behind. But God is so good. Screamed out a message. Come out of her, my people. And the door was shut to the denominational system. That's the reason why today that there are people here that have been in the denominations. But God spoke one day to individuals as in, in Revelation chapter 3 Starting in the 18th verse, I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire. That is us. That thou mayest be rich. And white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. And that the shame of thy na nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye saved, that thou mayest see. As many as I love. Jesus said in the 17th chapter of the book of John. I pray not for the world. He was in his prayer then. That's right. He said I pray not for the world. But I pray for those that you have given me yes. out of the world. The as many as I love. I rebuke and chasten. The chastening of the Lord today is still real. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Otherwise, with zeal, not just 
not just some preacher standing up here praying for you to receive salvation and walk away. No. It takes a it takes the realness. Hey. Jesus said you must be born again. I'm not here to tell you what your birth is. I'm not here to tell you what it may be. But I'm, I'm standing here to tell you today, be born again. Whatever, whatever God, whatever God, however he does. I had a great uncle come from the mountains of North Carolina. He began to get under conviction. And he told people, he said, I don't want to be one to make a scene. He said, I want a quiet religion. So he went to the altar. And they said you could hear him scream for a mile. <laughs> Preacher said, He said, I don't go by a lot of books and things like that. He said, I'm, I'm an open letter. He said, I just open up and let her fly. <laughs> I guess that's probably the way I am sometime. But there's a message of truth. There's something real. We're not here out here feeling the air to see if there's something going on in the air that would kindly excite us or anything because the air don't really excite me. <laughs> Especially these cold mornings whenever the wind's blowing. But God is in the cold and he's in the heat. But then one day, in some of our lifetime, as Brother Jackson used to say, a little man, call him a little man, which he was. Somebody told Brother Glenn one time, I know who Brother Branham is. I've seen him. I've been in his meeting. He's about six feet tall. <laughs> five, five be better, or maybe five, six. Just before he died, the most he ever weighed, he weighed 155 pounds. God didn't choose him. They, I, I've heard somebody say lately that one of the brothers, that Samson, I believe his brother Kevin, Samson, they want to make him some big husky man grinding that corn and stuff as they hooked him up to it. But Samson didn't get his strength from Something like that. His strength come when the hand of God was upon him. He realized where his strength came from. We know, to, we know this morning where our strength come from. And the four beasts, eight first, had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. See, I was telling you a while ago they had eyes in front and back, but now then the eyes are within. The message come from the heart. It's not something that you read out here and you gather I've got books that says sermon starters. <laughs> they give you an out outline of what to preach from Sunday to Sunday, just like next Easter. They already know what they're going to preach because they read it out of a book. Some big orator, he'll get up there and he'll 
make some kind of a motions and stuff like that, and all the time he's just reading what that somebody else has printed. God looks on the heart. We got eyes within us. Read it again. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. That is the ministry of this hour. Because we've been given everything. And when those beasts, which is the bride of Christ, I know each one of them has, has an ignition that starts it. But then it goes into the bride of Christ itself. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that, that sat upon the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders. Now there's a difference. This fourth chapter is about the bride of Christ. It's showing John going up in his spirit. And the bride of Christ is represented in that opening up of that. And each one of, each one of those seals represents, each one of those beasts represents a, a, a people. And the four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crown before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure. They are and were created For the God's pleasure. They are and were created. Of course, here's there's a four beast. Now, I don't think any of them look like a dinosaur. It would be a man. But you, but that's man's thinking. That's not, I asked Brother David to do that, so that's all right. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. I'm going to chapter 5. We're speaking of the bride of Christ. When we go into the fifth chapter, that's what we're talking about. Starting in the fifth verse, John is, John's there looking on the scene there in heaven. He's still there. But he, he's still in his natural body, but he's seeing heavenly things, and he don't know exactly what to do with it. Because he sees seals, which we got a picture of. 
He sees seven seals. Fifth verse of the fifth chapter. And one of the elders, which would be of those Jewish element, saith unto me, Weep not, behold the line of the tribe of Judah. Of course, one of the elders would speak to John because he's a Jew. This is one of the elders because they are in heaven even today. After Jesus' resurrection, they were raised, and they're in heaven now. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals. There are seven seals there that we're holding this. Now there's only one. Six of them has been revealed. The seventh is still hanging there. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. It is really a scroll. Open the scroll. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, which are, which as he sees it now, they're in heaven. in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, which would be in heaven. You're already there in spirit. But we're here to accomplish what is supposed to be done in our physical bodies. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. The reason the setting is that the, the 24 elders are there is because that they have, because that they now recognize who Jesus Christ was. You take the old prophets, they prophesied about Jesus. Isaiah prophesied in three different places about the Lord Jesus. In the seventh chapter, in the ninth chapter, in the 53rd chapter. Told about who he was, Emmanuel which interpreted is God with us. God was with us in Christ. Because the Spirit of God come and entered into him as it were a dove, which was a representative of John, what he would see when he did come. Yes. And I beheld and lo in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. You take, in the fourth chapter, the fifth verse, out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now this is setting here, which is the seven spirits of God. And Jesus Christ is wrapped up in those seven spirits of God. It, God came to live in Christ. God, God, which is spirit, came to live in an earthly man. And God, which is spirit, 
the Holy Ghost come to live inside of you. The same anointing that was on Christ is in you by the Holy Ghost. Now something strange. Like fire should have been in our bones. In the seven, eighth verse, or it's the seventh one. And he came and took the book or the scroll out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Otherwise, he's taken the book or the scroll out of God's hand, which God is a spirit, but he's represented here as a hand. We see him in in. Uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 52, we see the arm of God. And when he had taken the scroll or the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of all the saints, prayers of the saints. See, here in this setting here, they're already there. Which would be after the rapture has taken place. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seal thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, which covers the whole earth. Somewhere in this earth, all over this earth, man has been given a chance to know God. That's why it says that in Romans. They are without excuse. You say, well, what about those poor people in, in the jungles of Africa and things? Somewhere in their line, they had that opportunity. God is a merciful God. Read that ninth one again. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. Who, do they re redeem, who did he redeem us to? To God. And has made, here, here we are, sitting here today, but here is the answer to it all. Amen. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. Because why? Because we are the bride of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will be the headship which his thoughts will penetrate. The bride people in that hour before they said before that we or able to pray, or those in the millennium, able to pray that they will have the answer. What does the Bible say? God is a present help in the time of need. And he will show it then. And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast. 
and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands bright people. What a meeting. About a month from now, we'll be having a convention. It'll probably be pretty full, especially on Sunday morning and all. But think about that meeting. Yes. And everyone will receive notice. It's an invitation to everyone. We will be treated equal. Praise the Lord. You will... You will enjoy the blessings of God just the same as the ministry. Yes, praise the Lord. I, think, I mean, I know probably maybe the second song this morning I could hear some sister shouting. I don't know where she was. I couldn't see. But they're going to be shouting on the heels of glory. I'm, I know they are because it reads it right here. Saying with a loud voice. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. This will come from the saints of God. Now, John, John has really got happy, and he, he feels that his voice has gone throughout the world. Listen at him. And every creature which is in heaven, and on earth, and under the earth, and such are as are in the sea, and all that are there, that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing, and honor, and glory, and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four be said, Amen. Amen. You're part of that beast. Amen. That life's beast, you're part of it. Amen. See, the four beasts say amen, but the elders, they fall on their faces many times. <laughs> and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. And I'm going to stop at that this morning. May God bless you. Thank you for sitting here and listening and for you out there. You're part of us. We're part of one another. Because I read that in the book of the fourth chapter of, of Ephesians. So may God bless you today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the truth that you've given to us. Pray now your blessings upon each one. May you minister unto their needs. Sanctify our lives thoroughly. Be with us. Forgive us of our sins. Guide us in the, in the direction you'd have us to go. May your name be praised. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you all this morning. Thank you for listening. Let's go ahead and stand. <clears throat> if anyone has a need, you can come.
If we never meet again on this earth, my precious friend, if to God we have been true and we've lived above all sin, then for us there'll be a meeting. Yes, a hallelujah greeting. I'll see you. I'll see you in the rapture, see you in the rapture, I'll see you at that meeting in the air, there with our blessed Savior, we'll live and reign forever, I'll see some sweet day and to my loved ones let me say that there's sure to come a day when our Lord will come again and take his waiting right away so get ready now to meet him and with how I'll see you in the rapture, I'll see you in the rapture, I'll see you at that meeting in the air, there with our blessed Savior, we'll live and reign forever, I'll see say that there's sure to come a day when our Lord shall come again and take his waiting bride away. Let's get ready now to meet him and with hallelujah's greeting I'll see Some sweet day, oh yeah. 
Yes, I'll see you in the rapture. I'll see you in the rapture. I'll see you at the meeting in the air. There with our blessed Savior, we'll live and reign forever. I'll see you in the rapture some sweet day. Kevin, come and pray as we're dismissed this morning. Let us all bow our heads this morning. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Almighty God, as we look to you today, Father, we are thankful in our hearts. We rejoice today, Lord, that the words that have been spoken, Lord, how they are uplifting and edifying. Lord, how they solidify, Lord, our walk with you. Knowing, God, that you have sent your truth in this hour. Lord, that is called out of people today. Lord, that, to, that know your truth, Lord, and that are listening to that of your word as it comes forth through your ministry. Lord, may it take effect, Lord, and have an effect upon each heart and soul. We thank you for it, and we lift up to you the many that stand in need today. Lord, touch the sick and the needy and meet every need, Lord, that is here among us, and Lord, those around the world that are looking to you for their help and need, Lord, today. And as we would leave this place this morning, may your hand of protection go upon each one. Lead, guide, and direct us, Lord, and bring us back at the appointed time this evening. May we all come expecting to receive, Lord, and looking for what you would have prepared for us. For we ask it in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.